Well, a full-blown war could overwhelm the Iron Dome, the cornerstone of Israel's defence system. That is according to US officials. Little surprise that rare warning came down in a week when we have seen increased signs of an expanding war on the Israel-Lebanon border. Let's take a closer look. This very latest round of hostility kicked off with this video. Nine minutes of purported drone footage released by Hezbollah showing civilian and military sites some 30 kilometers into Israeli territory. It reached as far as Haifa port, arguably one of Israel's most important economic lifelines. Reaction inside Israel was naturally fierce. The government reminded Hezbollah it would be destroyed in a, quote, all-out war, with the cabinet announcing it has approved in principle plans for an offensive in Lebanon, though putting plans into action, of course, is another story. Never one to sit back quietly, Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah weighed in with his own televised speech, boasting that the group's growing capabilities uh, and even taking a dig at the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, which he accuses of aiding Israel uh, to prepare for potential war. Now, this is what you need to know. The Center for Strategic and International Studies calls Hezbollah the most heavily armed non-state military in the world. Most estimates put it at having around 45 to 100,000 soldiers and upwards of 150,000 short, medium and long range rockets. Well, for months, we've been reporting on flare ups along the Lebanese border and the spectre of a wider regional war. While both sides may want to avoid that, the reality is that in these situations, things can break loose from a single miscalculation. The longer this back and forth goes on, the more likely that becomes. So how expansive are Hezbollah's capabilities? And how much more than psychological warfare are we looking at at this point? CNN's veteran Middle East correspondent Ben Wiedemann is in southern Lebanon to help us unpack all of this. Ben, let me start with the US voicing these concerns. I just want to remind our viewers the purpose of the Iron Dome system is designed to intercept incoming rockets with a range of up to 70 kilometers. Nasrallah on Wednesday boasting that his military had only used a portion of his arsenal. And here is more of what he said. The enemy knows that no place in the entire state is safe from our missiles, and it won't be arbitrary. Everything will be deliberately targeted. Washington concerned that Hezbollah could overwhelm this Iron Dome system. Multiple um, sources have told CNN that. Could Hezbollah easily overwhelm this system? Becky, I don't think it could overwhelm the system, but it definitely could punch some serious holes in it. I mean, for one thing, what we've seen since October uh, is that Hezbollah has been focusing specifically on knocking out Israel's uh, surveillance equipment that keeps an eye on what's going on uh, on the other side of the border. And uh, for instance, we saw that nine minute video of a drone uh, over Haifa uh, collecting all sorts of intelligence on sensitive military uh, positions. We saw also recently a video put out by Hezbollah showing them knocking out an, an Iron Dome battery. Uh, just last night, Hezbollah on its tele telegram program uh, te channel put out a video of some sort of projectile knocking down what's called the drone dome, an anti-drone system. Uh, so clearly, Hezbollah has the capability to really knock holes in that critical defense for Israel. You know, back in May of last year, I covered uh, a brief war between Islamic Jihad in Gaza and Israel, and I saw firsthand how effective the Iron Dome was in taking down almost every 
a missile fired out of Gaza. The Israelis say the efficiency rate is 95.5 percent. But Islamic Jihad and Hamas are completely different creatures than Hezbollah. Now, earlier, Becky, you were talking about the numbers, perhaps 40, 50, 100,000 fighters uh, Hezbollah has. But it's not necessarily the numbers that count. Uh, lots of uh, non-state actors have lots of fighters. Lots of countries have lots of soldiers. But what I've seen over the years, going back to the 1990s, uh, when Hezbollah was fighting Israel in the south of Lebanon, trying to drive the Israelis out, what was clear is that these fighters were, for one, dedicated to the cause, and another, very well trained and highly disciplined as well. I've come in contact with, you know, ragtag militias in Africa, the Middle East, elsewhere. Uh, but in terms of just organization and discipline, there's really nothing that compares with Hezbollah. So their ability to use high technology, uh, to use laser guided missiles and other sophisticated systems could easily knock out a variety of Israel's defense systems, parts of it. I doubt the entirety of it, but certainly enough uh, to expose a large part of the population mm -hmm. of northern Israel to Hezbollah's weaponry. Becky? This is a very different beast from Hamas. Um, you're talking about its capabilities here. How, Ben, has Hezbollah been able to build up its arsenal to the levels that we um, understand uh, to exist today? Well, for one thing, it's being supplied by Iran. And for another thing, they have also developed their own uh, capabilities. Just to give you an anecdote, you know, if you go to the Dahya, the southern suburb of Beirut, uh, what you see are these great big billboards of all the students who have graduated with high grades from universities specializing in engineering, chemistry, all sorts of sort of real-world practical skills, uh, they place a great emphasis on education. So they have developed their own capabilities. But let's keep in mind, you know, Gaza is surrounded. Uh, it may have had tunnels to Egypt, but uh, by and large, by sea, by air, by land, it is surrounded. It's basically an open-air prison. We've heard that before. Lebanon is not. Lebanon has Syria borders with Syria. Syria has borders with Iraq. Iraq has borders with Iran. The ability, basically, it's a strategic depth that Hamas and Gaza never had. And therefore, the ability for Iran to supply it with weapons, for fighters from Hezbollah to go to Iran to get advanced training in not only sort of fighting, but scientific specializations that allow them to develop weapons themselves. So it's not simply a case of, you know, a, a ragtag militia in Lebanon receiving sophisticated mm. weaponry. They are well trained in the use of that weaponry. Becky? And Ben, we talk about the, the, the significant scope of these short, medium and long term rockets. What about the impact of what is a relatively new um, weapon in their arsenal, that of drones? Yeah, I mean, that nine-minute video that Hezbollah put out oh, from over Haifa, mm. and of course, Nasr Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general of Hezbollah, came out and said, look, we have a lot more, not only around Haifa, but he said after Haifa and after, after uh, Haifa. So not only do they have the ability to collect intelligence, obviously, you know, drones, a lot of drones you can actually buy uh, off the shelf and then fit them with military uh, capabilities. And in addition, uh, drones are, are much cheaper, for instance, than a ballistic missile. Uh, they're easy to put together, they're easy to fly, mm. it's not hard to train somebody on them, and they can be equipped with, as I said, weaponry uh, sure. as well. And this has really changed the face, not the sort of the face of warfare. You know, we saw it in Ukraine, we're seeing it in the Middle East where you know, all sorts of new weaponry and tactics are coming out. And I think the Israelis, who have a massive uh, military establishment, are struggling to deal with 
this new nature of warfare. And the drone certainly is one of the most obvious components of that new generation of war.